Welcome to the Texas Gulf Coast. I've lived here, taught here, virtually my entire life. Everyone, every building, and every street corner here has a story, and I've set out to find them. I'm Professor John Britt of Lee College, and this is the history in your own backyard. There is a story, a wonderful story, concerning Sam Houston, Jr., the eldest child of the eight that Margaret Lee Houston would bear for her husband, General Sam Houston, the hero of San Jacinto. Sam Houston, as I am sure many of you know, was opposed to succession and was removed from the governor's office by the Texas Successionist Convention. Houston and his wife and children sought refuge in the small cabin Houston had built at Cedar Point, near the mouth of Cedar Bayou in what is today Chambers County. 18-year-old Sam Jr. arrived home from Bastrop, where he'd been living, and began to talk of going off to war. Sam Jr. was a dutiful son and knew his father needed help on the farm, but he felt shackled by the tedium of rural life. In July, Sam Jr., against his father's wishes, went off to drill at Evergreen Plantation with Ashville Smith's duly formed Confederate company, the Balin Guards. Young Sam was infused with the martial spirit and returned to Cedar Point only to tell his parents that he would be going with the Balin Guards to Galveston for further training. Old Sam was pleased that if his son insisted on going to war, he would be under the command of his old friend, Dr., now Captain, Ashville Smith. Sam's gift to his son was a new Confederate uniform. The boy's mother gave him a Bible, a Bible that would save his life. Sam Houston, by the way, often made the trip across the bay to Galveston to watch his son and his fellow soldiers in the Balin Guards drill. As Company C of the 2nd Texas Regiment, the Balin Guards eventually arrived in Tennessee to take part in the terrible Battle of Shiloh, April 6th through 7th, 1862. As one historian characterized it, Shiloh was the first great battle that came to characterize the war. Massive armies thrown against each other with little regard for the number of casualties. Over 20,000 men, approximately 10,000 on both sides, would be wounded or killed at Shiloh. And Sam Houston Jr. was among the wounded and left to die on the battlefield. In fact, half of the Balin guards were either wounded or killed. However, young Sam refused to die. A Union chaplain found the boy barely alive and discovered the Bible his mother had given him with the inscription, Margaret Lee Houston to her beloved son. The chaplain, long an admirer of General Houston, rescued the boy who regained his health and was sent to a Union prison camp. One source of this story claims that young Sam's life was saved when a musket ball hit the metal jacket that covered the Bible his mother had given him. Another claims that the Union chaplain discovered the Bible in the boy's knapsack. Regardless of which is true, the Bible his mother gave him did indeed save the boy's life. After the war, Sam Jr. studied medicine in Pennsylvania and became a physician. In the latter part of his life, he turned to his real love, writing. But this is more than a tale about Sam Houston, Jr. It is also the story of two remarkable men, General Sam Houston and Dr. Ashville Smith, who despite differences over succession, remained friends until Houston's death in Huntsville in 1863. Ashville Smith was born in Connecticut, studied medicine at Yale, and shortly after arriving in Texas was instantly drawn to General Houston. The two shared a room during Houston's first presidency of the Republic in a two-room dog crock cabin in the city of Houston, then the capital of the Republic. They would often talk late into the night discussing philosophy and the great classics of Western literature. Houston came to value his new friend's unique talents and in 1838 sent him to negotiate a treaty with the Comanche Indians. In the early 1840s, Houston posted Smith as a Texas special envoy to Europe where he negotiated treaties favorable to Texas with both England and France. Smith was an experienced soldier, participating in both the war with Mexico and with the Confederacy in the Civil War. After the war, he came home to successfully pursue his dream of establishing a Texas university and medical school. Despite their differences over the succession issue, Smith and Houston's friendship never 
wavered. In 1863, when Sam Houston was dying in Huntsville, Smith made the arduous and dangerous journey to spend four days ministering to his old comrade, a remarkable act of friendship during these dark and terrible times. So I'll end on this note, the tale of a boy critically wounded in Shiloh whose life was saved by the Bible his mother gave him and an enduring friendship under the most taxing of circumstances of two giants of Texas history. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Mic check, mic check, one, two, three.